Tonight on Politically Incorrect, rocker Dave Matthews, comedy legend Carl Ryder, that Regan woman Judith Regan, and your Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Clarence Page. And now, the star of Politically Incorrect, Bill Maher. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the Chicago Tribune and his latest collection of essays is called Showing My Color, Clarence Page. There's Clarence. Hey man, good, good to see, see you again. again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Writer, director, performer, lover, legend, and 12-time Emmy winner, his new movie is Bette Midler's That Old Feeling I Saw It Is Very Funny, Carl Reiner. Yeah. Very funny picture, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. The controversial president of Regan Company Publishing and the host of that Regan woman, Judith Regan. Yes. There she is. Hello. Oh, I don't have a book on you. Thank you very much. There's your book. I should have plugged that before. And finally, his first album, Under the Table and Dreaming, won triple platinum. Its follow-up is called Crash. Dave Matthews. Come on, Dave. Nice to see you. I have this. Folks, he's right. not going to sing. <laughs> I wish I was, though. Wow. That's, I'm more comfortable doing I that. I guess that shows us where... <laughs> why don't you, let, no, him no, no, why no. Don't you no. let him sing one note and he'll oh. feel more comfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to talk about puberty. Now... <laughs> Have, have you, you gone reached through it? Good yes, I have. <laughs> and, and that's the point. When I went through it, I was a lot older than kids are doing it today, which is, sounds like a joke, but it's not a joke. This was front page news last week. Puberty signs evident in seven and eight-year-old girls. Did you see this in the paper? Yes, I mean, yes. I have an eight-year-old son at home who's very excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> well, I don't... I don't know what Follow to... Follow that up, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. I mean, this is shocking news. How could this be? Seven and eight is very young, and it says that, yes, they are developing breasts and pubic hair and seven and eight, changes that often confuse and alarm them. But, you know, I, I just have to say, my sister told me this recently, uh, that when she, we moved to South Africa in 1980, and she, uh, she, she, she was leaving, she was leaving, uh, her school, where she was the only one that didn't have, well, hadn't gone into puberty, you know? All, everyone else had boobs and hairy armpits, and, and she was about 11, so she, we went back to South Africa, and she started to sprout, and six months later, uh, they, she went to school, and uh, I think she realized it was a very traumatic moment for her when she was up doing a little stage play with all the other girls that she was the only one that had gushes hair coming out from under her arms. So, it's, it's an American phenomenon. That's kind of funny. Well, I, th I think it, it is know, in a sense yeah. because I think it that what it... does say U.S. girls. I think US what it girls. indicates is a serious loss of innocence. And I think that if we look at what's going on in this culture, children are growing up too fast. And any woman knows that her menstrual cycle is tremendously affected by things like emotions and experiences and what's happening. Well, you're, you're saying because of what's going on in the culture, it actually causes that, physical... I think it's I believe that's true. It might very I well be. It might... <laughs> yes, I do. And I also think our obsession with sex... <laughs> our obsession? I think we are obsessed with sex in this culture. I think that girls see on television... But film. why would the obsession with sex get because, into our Because, because our genes. minds have an effect on our brains and on our bodies. Don't tell me. Every you're going to blame woman... television for this, right? No, no, I'm not blaming television. Uh, it's the culture. You know, I think we're growing up too fast. The proliferation of kitty beauty pageants. The, the mothers are, the mothers are saying, get sexy. <laughs> Be, look like you have breasts when you don't have it. That's what they do. Another thing, I think it's something, it's something uh, nutritional. Yeah, I there's really too much sugar. Use. You know, there's... Sugar? There's, there's sugar-covered cereal, sugar-covered uh, sugar cubes. 
I mean, I, 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 oh, I was at my is, grandson's house. That would retard other, your growth. I, yeah. I, well, I don't know, but I, maybe I, it says Carl, it. Carl, I think you're going to hit the sugar lobby now. I know. <laughs> women are going through menopause at an earlier age. It's the whole acceleration of of our lives. We're moving too fast. The kids are growing up too fast. I have two children. I have a 16 year old and a five year old, and I can tell you their experience in childhood is vastly different from mine. Yes, they're, they're growing up too fast, and their bodies are responding. It makes perfect sense to me. There was also an item in the paper yesterday that fourth graders were sent off to a room as a disciplinary measure, nine fourth graders, and wound up engaging in sexual activity. So Washington, uh, D.C. In Washington, oh, D.C. Really? A big story Again, there. Again, they're exposed. So you they see it, they see it. Well, then you are blaming TV. It's cultural TV. stimulation. The, you know, it's not just TV. They see okay, it in their homes. Calvin Klein ads and... It's stuff like that. Be, rampant in the culture. Couldn't and it's it what, we, we, what we think we value. We think we value sex above everything else you in this know, country. I, I, mean, I did, uh, uh, in do. the 1960s, <laughs> I, had the, <laughs> I had the Dick Van Dyke show, and we weren't allowed to show that they lived in the same bed. They were in separate beds. Right. And I'm right. watching all these shows now, and I think they're very funny and very well written, but there isn't a, a situation comedy now that is not talking about the size of a person's member. Yes. They're not talking about, did you have it yesterday? <laughs> Did you? You're right. I saw three shows, one in a row. They said, did you get laid last night? And they yes. were talking about, and they were very casually. And I think kids see that. And they say, see, oh, they they so you think if we, if, we separate, if we separate the beds and TV shows, but the, those, uh, those ten-year-olds with boobs, we... And, and, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, suddenly I feel younger again. Right. I don't understand that. Okay, we have to take a break. We'll come right back. area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 213-852-2655. All right, welcome, uh, welcome back to American Bandstand. Now, we were, <laughs> we were talking about, uh, now this study, importantly, is only about girls. The puberty age seems to be lowering only for girls. Now, I want to ask if there's a connection between the fact that in my lifetime, certainly, the big change in sexuality has been with women. In my mother's day, they didn't used to, excuse me, put out. And they were right. <laughs> and you think they were right? No you doubt think, about it. Why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free, is what my mother taught me. And she was right. Because Every girl's women, mother taught them that. And they know, should. Or at least all and the girls should. I went out with, uh, <laughs> their mother but, taught them that. But you <laughs> held the girls in, in high regard because of that. And you worked harder to get them. If women give it away, the sexual revolution was devastating for women. It was also Maybe. devastating for men. But I it was so, worse certainly. for women because there was a time, it took us 2,000 years to get men to behave. 2,000 years to get them to marry us, to commit to us, to want to do what they should what be are you doing. What talking about? Men didn't marry in the Middle Ages? No, I mean, it took did. us a long time to, to, to associate shame with that kind of behavior, with, with infidelity and so on. So we finally get to the point where men are behaving. And then we say, yes, well, you know what? You don't have to behave. You can have it for nothing. And well, what was the result? We have single mothers all over this country raising children by themselves. But, Dave, you well, must we, have a hard time getting women. I do. Um, <laughs> now, the women, the women who throw themselves at you, the women who say, take me, I'm yours. Yeah. But, but you got any leftovers, you, Dave? <laughs> That's my no. Do you yeah. have respect for them? No, what, what, what is, it's, str it's strange. I, I, it, it's kind of overwhelming. When I was 15, I probably would have been like, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, now it's sort of more like, I should be your uncle or something, but, uh, or sometimes. I and mean, other times, I'm, you know, I, I leave the room after I've convinced them I'm my, their uncle and kick myself. And, but how important is it to have God. an intimate, think, loving relationship? I think it's the only thing that matters. Isn't the most important thing? I yeah, mean, no, do we so, want to sexualize women and say they're just, you know, objects no, for us to play with? Where I, are I you think getting... that this, in the, sorry, in the, in, the, in the 60s, I definitely think that was a, a, an attempted suicide for the, well, it wasn't an attempted suicide, but it was devastating for the feminist movement because suddenly they were using this modern kind of attitude that men were using and women like it was new don't be old-fashioned you know on your back and you know and and so i, I think it, i think it was i think it's true i think it's terrible and, and look at what happened to but, women wait a second i think your premise is false for all of us regular guys believe me they're not giving it away carl oh, this is accurate, but it's not accurate. 